we're going to graph two polar equations. The first one is r equals f of theta equals to 1 plus cosine of theta. And the second one is r equals g of theta equals 1 minus cosine of theta. Now once we have the graph for the first polar equation we'll be able to get the graph for the second equation fairly easily. Now so let's graph the first one. We're going to need two results to do it. The first result is the trig identity cosine of minus theta equals to cosine of theta. And the second result we're going to need, let's call that result B, is symmetry of a polar graph with respect to, so WRT stands for with respect to polar axis. And polar axis is just the x-axis or in polar terminology the line theta equals zero. So let's see when polar graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis or uh, the polar axis. So if we have a point on the graph, and let's put that point here in the first quadrant, it has coordinates r and theta, and so this is r, and theta is measured from the polar axis in the counterclockwise direction, then symmetry with respect to the polar axis says that we have to have a point on the opposite side of the polar axis and the coordinates, the polar coordinates of that point, we have the same r but the angle is measured clockwise so we denote it by minus theta. So if r theta is on the graph then r minus theta must also be on the graph and vice versa. Therefore r equals f of theta is our equation. If we replace theta with minus theta and compute f of minus theta we should get the same r and this is the test for symmetry with respect to polar axis. Now let's look at equation number one. Equation number one is r equals f of theta equals 1 plus cosine of theta. And let's test this for symmetry with respect to the polar axis. We're going to plug in minus theta for theta. And this is 1 plus cosine of minus theta by property A, by the trig identity A, this is 1 plus cosine of theta. And that's the original f of theta. So we just showed that for this polar equation, f of minus theta equals to f of theta and it's therefore symmetric with respect to the polar axis. So all we need to do is graph this equation on one side of the polar axis and then we'll get the other side by symmetry. So let's put a few points. This is theta and this is r. When theta is equal to 0, r is equal to 2 when theta is equal to uh, pi divided by 6. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2, so we get 1 plus square root of 3 over 2, which is a number less than 2. At pi over 4, we get 1 plus square root of 2 over 2. At pi over 3, cosine of pi over 3 is a half. 1 plus a half is 3 halves and then at pi over 2 cosine of pi over 2 is 0 plus 1 we get 1. Let's keep going in the first uh, in from the first quadrant to the second the next angle to look at would be 2 pi over 3 cosine of 2 pi over 3 is minus 1 half and 1 plus minus 1 half is 1 half at 3 pi over 4 we have a cosine of 3 pi over 4 is minus square root of 2 over 2. The value of r is 1 minus square root of 2 over 2. This is a still a positive number. At 5 pi over 6, cosine of 5 pi over 6 is minus square root of 3 over 2. So r is 1 minus square root of 3 divided by 2. And then the final value we need to look at is pi. Cosine of pi is minus 1 and then 1 plus minus 1 is 0. And now we're going to take these points and carefully plot them on 
the graph. So here is the graph. We'll make we'll label these. This is the x-axis. Theta is zero. And let's say this is this ray represents angle pi over six. This is pi over four. And this will be pi over three. And this right here is the y-axis or theta equals to pi over two. And this angle will be two pi over three. And this ray will be three pi over four. And then finally we get one more which is 5 pi over 6. So uh, when theta is 0, we get the largest value over here, that's 2. At pi over 6, we get a smaller value along that ray, 1 plus square root of 3 over 2. Then at pi over 4, 1 plus square root of 2 over 2. At pi over 3, we get uh, 3 halves. Then at pi, we get 1. At 2 pi over 3, 1 minus one half which is one half that's a smaller number here still positive so it's in the direction of two pi over three at three pi over four we get even a smaller number at five pi over six a smaller number and at pi we get zero so now when we graph all of this we get a shape that looks something like that and the direction from theta equals zero onward is this one. So the curve is traced out in this direction. And now by symmetry we get the exactly the same thing on the opposite side of the polar axis. So we trace out something similar and you can see this is a heart-shaped graph. It is called a cardioid which indicates that it's a heart-shaped graph and we can label a few points. This is 2. Uh, this point down here, this is when the uh, angle is minus uh, 3 pi divided by 2. So this is, um, this is minus 1. And up here when the angle is pi over 2, this is 1. And so that's the graph of the cardioid. Uh, R equals f of theta equals to 1 plus cosine of theta. Now we want to graph the second polar equation and the second polar equation recall was r equals to g of theta equals to 1 minus cosine of theta. Now we can do exactly the same thing as we just did for the first equation. That is clearly this is symmetric with respect to the polar axis by the same argument we'll plot a bunch of points and then we'll be able to get half the graph on one side of the polar axis. But we're going to use the following result to get this graph and the result is this. When we have a graph of r equals to uh, f of theta and suppose that we define a new polar equation by r equals g of theta equals f of theta minus alpha where alpha is, say, a fixed number, fixed uh, value of uh, an angle. Then the graph of g of theta, which is f of theta minus alpha, is the graph of f of theta rotated in the counterclockwise direction by alpha radians. So let's go back to equation one. The equation one was r equals to f of theta equals to one plus cosine of theta. Now let's replace theta, let alpha equal to pi and replace theta with theta minus pi. So let's look at this new polar equation g of theta equals to f of theta minus pi, well that's equal to 1 plus cosine of theta minus pi. And recall the following trig identity, cosine of a minus b is equal to cosine of a times cosine of b plus sine a uh, sine b. 
So we'll use this trig identity here. This is equal to 1 plus cosine of theta cosine of pi plus sine theta sine pi. Now sine pi is 0. So this part is 0. Cosine of pi is minus 1. So this is equal to 1 minus cosine of theta. So we, we just saw that we get the second equation from the first by replacing theta by theta minus pi. Therefore, the graph of the second equation is the graph of the first one rotated by pi radians in the counterclockwise direction. So here's the graph once again of the first equation. It's a cardioid. It looks like that. Now, if we rotate it, this is a graph of r equals 1 plus cosine of theta. If we rotate this 180 degrees in, well, I guess it doesn't matter which direction, but we'll rotate it in the counterclockwise direction, we get a new graph. So this is the x-axis, uh, theta equals 0. This is the y-axis, or theta equals to pi over 2. We're rotating the cardioid in counterclockwise direction uh, by 180 degrees or pi radians will give us the following graph and this is the graph of the second equation this is a graph of r equals to 1 minus cosine of theta so we could have obtained this graph in exactly the same way as we did the first one by noting symmetry with respect to the polar axis and then plotting points corresponding to values of theta in the first and the second quadrant and then using symmetry. But we could also do it by noting that it's the, really the graph of the first equation rotated 180 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. For more videos, visit www.mathprepvideos.com.